We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. No, I join hands so often with students and others behind jail bars singing it. We shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes when we joined together to sing it, but we still decided to sing it. We shall overcome. I really first became involved in the NAACP um, maybe around 1973 or 74 in that area. I'm um, public relations director for the NAACP. I also chair the WIN program uh, for the NAACP and that's called Women in the NAACP and I co-chair voter registration. So, and I'm also you know, on the board of directors. It's a very intricate part of the NAACP. It has really been an intricate part of my life since I've been here in Savannah. Oh, had it not been for the NAACP, we would n not nearly, would it not even been halfway to where we are now. In fact, had it not been for the NAACP, there would not have even been a Civil Rights Act passed in the first place. The NAACP announced its plans today to boycott the state of South Carolina until the Confederate flag is removed from state house grounds. And, and I think that is the biggest problem that most people don't know why there's such an uproar over the flag. I'm not racist. Uh, when I see the rebel flag, I don't think of a black and white thing. It's something that our grandfathers went through war with, and that's all it represents to me. Let go to another day. Let bygones be bygones. But when the Civil Rights Movement started, that flag became a symbol of disapproval for the freedom of blacks. Many of in our state and nation still maintain a confederacy of the mind that seeks to legitimize inequitable treatment on the basis of race and class. I don't know if you saw the exhibit that the Ralph Mark Gibbons Civil Rights Museum had on uh, this year in February for Black History Month. When you look at that exhibit, you will see that that Confederate flag was on the uh, helmets of those troops that was even beating a woman, a woman beating her on the ground with a stick over her and a gun, a big gun with that, that uh, flag on his helmet. And there's also a picture of, of the flag on a truck where whites holding that flag up. So that that flag became a symbol of hatred. So that's why we feel like, and yes, I've been over to South Carolina. Yes, I will go again. Yes, I will always say that that flag should be down. And I, I'm, I'm proud of Georgia for taking it down before it even got that far. As parents, as, as, as adults, as teachers, as ministers, if you as leaders, black and white, me, and Hispanics or whatever, I think we should sit down and talk to our young people and tell the them the truth of why the flag should be removed. I always hold a place for you in my heart. I started here as a volunteer, um, and really just because I wanted to do some volunteer work in the community, and I thought that I could uh, help the museum by trying to get it out in the community to make the people aware of 
the museum being here and why it was here and what it could really do for the community, how it could really help the community. My duties here is the overall operation of the museum, uh, including getting funds for the museum to operate by and on. That's, that's what I do, it's just the overall operation of the museum. The, the building started as the uh, Wade Journal's Bank building, uh, Black Bank in 1914, the building was built in 1914, and it was the largest black bank um, in the nation, and it's the oldest black bank. Um, it has always housed black businesses, in fact the NAACP was housed here in this building also. Uh, and in the early 60s, Mr. Law had the vision of making it the uh, Civil Rights Museum to house the memory and the history of Savannah's civil rights uh, struggles and the struggles of, of the African American community in which Savannah is the oldest African American community in Georgia. He wants me to serve him once. I would just like to honor like everyone else is. Well, you are like everyone else here now, are you? But what strikes me as one of the most uh, significant um, displays is the lunch counter. I think that gets everybody's attention. Uh, that walks into the mu museum, the first thing they want to see is the lunch counter. But the museum houses so much history, so much uh, suffering, such a hard struggle, and the bitterness, and the uh, present, and the future of the African American community until it's just all of it, all phases of it, all three flows of it is just really uh, very significant. The youth of today really don't have a way to learn this information. So now the museum is a, a place where anybody can come at to learn anything about the civil rights movement here in Savannah. Probably the most important museum in the city of Savannah, and every Savannah needs to come here two or three times a year. Savannah played a great role in the uh, civil rights movement. As I said, uh, it had one of the, the most successful boycotts for 19 months. Uh, and there's a saying that says, Savannah's law, referring to W.W. Law. Because at that time, People really worked together. They came together and they bonded together to get uh, Savannah uh, integrated into the kind of city that, that we thought that we needed and with leaders like W.W. Law to do that. There was not the violence that you found in Selma and in other places uh, in Savannah. That was not that was not it. It was a peaceful movement. Because it was, the message was one and the same, that that's all we really wanted was a better America for everybody. When Dr. King came here, he didn't come here to help us fight in the movement. He came here to make a speech, and he said then that Savannah was the most integrated city on this side of the Mississippi River. Savannah has produced some great leaders and still produce great people. And being able to work with and meet such people as Earl T. Shenholster, who started out right here, uh, that's a native Savannian that started out right here at the age of 12 in the Savannah uh, NAACP branch youth council and going on uh, in life to head up the national NAACP uh, office. Is, has been just great, just very rewarding to me. And to meet other NAACP uh, workers that, that has really given their life. Uh, and to think about people like, like them that, that gave their lives and are still working and, and, and getting out there to make things easier for us. Those are the people that I deal with every day, that I work with every day, that I have to go back and pull my strength and my energy from to make all of this possible. That, 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 that does it all to make me want to do more and want to do better.
was blind. 